Okay. Uh, where the fuck? Where is Tamasius's playlist? See if I can find it on my own. I can't. Chris Small's interview happened already. Do something to lower blood pressure. No one cares how good you are at games. It's all bands. Um, this was like, you know, watching, by the way, I don't care. I don't care. Even if you talk shit, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. I'm bad at video games. We literally have established that. That's not a thing. The fallout from you the You can't F own me by saying I'm bad at video games. It's something I know already. You're just literally beating a dead horse by saying, Hassan, you're bad at video games by something I already admit. Okay. I recognize it. I admit it. I don't know why you keep fucking mentioning it. I got it. I know. I know I'm bad. Okay, I was too busy fucking getting pussy instead of fucking playing video games. Okay, big problem. I know. Okay. I'm hangry. FBI's extraordinary search of Donald Trump's home and club in Florida. We're learning more about what they did, what they found, as partisans debate this unprecedented development. Chief Washington Correspondent John Carl starts us off. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. We're learning new details about the FBI's raid of Mar-a-Lago as Republican attacks on the Department of Justice and the FBI intensify, prompting fears that rhetoric could turn to violence. In the face of growing Republican outrage over the raid of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home, the White House is declining to make any comment whatsoever, other than to say President Biden had no role in authorizing it and, in fact, didn't even know about it until the news broke. The president was not briefed, did not, was not aware of it, no. No one at the White House was given uh, a heads up, no, that did not happen. Republicans are accusing the Biden administration of weaponizing the FBI and the Justice Department. Some Trump allies are even calling to defund the FBI. And Republican House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is threatening to investigate Attorney General Merrick Garland. We now find that justice in America is not equal. While stoking outrage, Republicans are also attempting to raise money off it. With fundraising appeals already going... Thank you. My name is... Arkaya and Anila for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you, leftist username, for the 5 gifted subs. Um, okay. I just think that, like, uh, it, maybe even Gamba makes it worse because, like, then people have, like, an additional stake in my losses so they feel it harder. I don't know. Stop. Stop sending me fucking clips. Stop. I'd like, why? Well, I've moved on already. You're a 19-month subscriber. Why? Why are you sending me clips of other fucking content creators being like, he's bad at video games? We moved on. We're talking about fucking politics. Stop. This is no different than like fucking drama baiting. Wait, like, let's, let's, let's go back to it. Okay. Let, let's, let's watch that. What, what do you, what do you, what do you expect is going to happen in this process? They're going to say, I love Hassan. I'm a fan of him, but goddamn, is he so bad at fucking video games? I hope he's not mauled. What do we do now? And then I'm going to go, oh man, that's so funny because I am actually bad at video games. Instead of talking about fucking politics, we, we wait. Just join I think over we there? wait for the next uh, losers brackets. <laughs> Don't say we 9 11 to them. <laughs> That's not, yeah, you can't. It's not good. You can't. Do there you go. It's good. It's funny. Ha ha. We moved on. Okay. Are, are you happy? You got it. Holy shit, dude. It, it's like, like, why? Why do you, why do you do this? Why do you do this, Shatters? Why? Why do you do this? Why? going out from the Republican National Committee and from Trump himself. But some Trump critics are raising concerns as well and calling for the Justice Department to explain why it raided Trump's home. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, a longtime Trump critic, called on the Biden administration to release documents authorizing the raid and warned that if the federal government doesn't have overwhelming evidence that action was absolutely necessary, then it will only undermine faith in democracy and the rule of law. The Justice Department and the FBI have refused to comment. Standard policy in an ongoing investigation. Law enforcement sources will only say that the raid was related to documents that Trump allegedly took improperly from the White House when he left office, some of which are classified. 
Trump himself could reveal the reasons for the raid. His lawyers were given a copy of the warrant, which would detail the reasons for the search, but he has declined to release it. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News that 45 minutes before FBI agents showed up on Monday, the FBI's Miami field office gave the Secret Service team at Mar-a-Lago a heads up. According to the sources, Secret Service agents on site did not notify Mar-a-Lago staff until just as FBI agents were arriving. They then escorted the FBI onto the property. Sources close to Trump say the club's general manager then called Eric Trump, who then alerted his father. None of the Trump family was on site at the time. There's a double bind in this situation where, on the one hand, Donald Trump not releasing the search warrant is weird because, like, why wouldn't you if it's like a bullshit search warrant? On the other hand, the White House could release the search warrant and be like, no, it's actually legitimate. Here, we have access to it. And then they're not doing it. So then that's suspicious. Like, is this actually actionable material or is it just fucking bullshit? Is a very real question that, um, that at least I'm asking. You know what I mean? But also, I get why Donald Trump wouldn't really fucking send it out because, like, this way he gets to milk it, but not really, because if the, if the, if the search warrant and it's, uh, if the search warrant itself is actually not, uh, is actually bullshit, that would, ma that would manufacture further outrage. You know what I mean? No, don't give him a day off. I despise 60 month subscribers that do this. These are all the longest term community members. Do not give them just a day off. Permanently ban them. Okay? We've moved on and you're still fucking going crazy. You just you you don't you don't care about the fucking news. You don't care about what kind of content I want to make. You just want me to be your fucking drama monkey, okay? You want me to look at that and go, "Oh man, I'm so mad." Like that's it. It's not happening. Permanently ban long-term community subscribers who do this shit all the time. I, I don't want to watch it. I don't care. I've moved on. And in an entirely separate investigation, Republican Congressman Scott Perry, a staunch Trump ally, revealed overnight that the FBI seized his cell phone. Perry says he was traveling with his family at the time. Perry is the subject of a separate DOJ investigation believed to be related to January 6th. In a reminder that Trump faces multiple investigations, the former president is expected to be deposed today in New York by the New York State Attorney General as part of a civil investigation into the Trump family. Thank you for your 16-month subscription message. A real estate business. Trump fought Idiot. hard to avoid that deposition, George, and that is a legal battle that he lost. No question. Also yesterday, an appeals court ruled that the Congress can have access to Trump's tax returns. That's been going on for years. John Carl, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George. The pressure is on a now silent Attorney General Merrick Garland to give a solid reason for the raid. The Wall Street Journal editorial board warning the FBI search on Trump suggests that Garland may be committed to pursuing and indicting the former president. And if so, he is taking the country, country on a perilous road. Meanwhile, we are learning more about exactly... How is she so bad at this when, like, she's having a hard time fucking, uh, like, delivering the news and reading a fucking teleprompter when this was straight up her job for the past four years before she even got to Fox News? what went down during that unprecedented raid. There are reports that agents ransacked Trump's personal office for hours. Mm. They broke into his safe and they even went through Melania Trump's wardrobe. An attorney for the former president says his legal team wasn't even allowed to watch as agents searched his estate. But when it was all over, the feds reportedly seized about a dozen boxes on Monday. And some of the items were covered in the first batch from earlier this year reportedly included letters from Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, and former President Obama as well. A cocktail napkin was included in a birthday dinner menu. And moments ago, reporters pressed President Biden to comment on the raid. The details, Kennedy, get worse and worse. The agents were apparently... <laughs>
That's insane that I jokingly talked about cocktail menus. And that is actually some of the materials that he had taken from the White House. I'm going to lose my fucking mind, dude. I thought that that was a fucking meme, dude. I literally said it as a joke. I said it as a fucking meme. Why would they co classify cocktail menus? Everything is classified. Technically, everything... Dude, technically, the president writing on a fucking napkin. That is privileged information. That's classified. There's a, there's a way of archiving all of that. It was a cocktail menu, uh, napkin, not a menu. Oh, yeah. Anything the president writes down, anything the president writes down is, uh, is, is going to be uh, uh, privileged information. Currently there from 9 a.m. to 6.30. 9 a.m. to 6.30. That is nine and a half hours as they're scouring through Melania's closet, breaking open safes. Apparently, the attorneys were not just not allowed in. They were told to turn off security cameras, which they did not do. Good mm. move. Uh, there was a rider truck on the scene. Apparently, the DOJ lawyers, according to Trump representatives, were very rude, and they kept saying over and over again, we have full access to everything. We can go anywhere. Uh, it feels like the full power of the federal government raining down on a political enemy. Yeah, I would like to see. I know Kevin Walling in the previous hour talked about wanting to see the search warrant. I would love to see the search warrant. I would love to see what they got. I want to see who signed off on this. I want to I want to see who knew about this, including the president. And uh, I it's truly fucking wild to watch the very same demons. Who have. From the loudest rooftops screamed about how justifiable Breonna Taylor's death was in the aftermath of a no-knock warrant. Turn around and cry like the grossest crime has ever been committed because Donald Trump is under investigation and a part of that investigation required the federal authorities to uh, get certain like key pieces of evidence that his team was not willing to give for one reason or the other. There is no better example of the disdain that these people have for the regular old folks at home watching. When they say, when they say, oh, well, this can happen to you, the average American, this already does happen to the average American. They don't give a fuck, especially when the average American is a black person, okay? That's it. These are the, these are the exact same people. And I, I, I can't even, like, sit here and, and compare the two because it's not, like, it's not even on the same fucking playing field. It's like like a playground tickle fight uh, compared to straight-up fucking murder. You know what I mean? It's not even in the same universe. The unjustifiable murder of Breonna Taylor in the hands of the police force. And the lack of action in that subject, in that situation. Sorry, that's not true. There was one uh, piece of action. Uh, the consequence of, of the Breonna Taylor raid, which was bullshit, by the way, if you don't remember, was that uh, one of the officers actually shot indiscriminately, and some of those bullets entered another apartment in the same complex. So he got punished for that. They didn't get punished for fucking shooting and killing Breonna Taylor. It's just that uh, he got punished for shooting into a neighbor's house. Which is like adding insult to injury. You know what I mean? It's, it's literally the, the worst than fucking not getting punishments at all, almost. Property damage was more significant for the state in that circumstance than the whole ass life of Breonna Taylor. Okay? The reason why I'm mentioning this is because conservatives keep... Uh, Saying like, well, oh, you guys defended Breonna Taylor, but like, this is a, this is a step too far, huh? Like, it's just, it's fucking ridiculous. I, 
I want to know if there were any careful discussions that were had about how horrible this looks, what an incredible overreach this is. Uh and there is also obviously additional details about Breonna Taylor. Part of the reason why it's uh, important to notice uh, note is that federal officials have now charged the four officers in the Breonna Taylor raid. Remember, the conversation that we had, the conversation that I just had about the, the uh, ridiculous no-knock raid that occurred uh, was uh, was completely written off by the same court system that offered that fucking bullshit warrant. That same court system and the same prosecutorial system that allowed those cops to get that fucking no-knock warrant uh, then found them, you know, not guilty. Uh, put them on paid leave, all that sort of stuff. But now, uh, two years after, police officers killed Breonna Taylor during a late night raid in her apartment in Louisville, Kentucky. The Justice Department has announced a series of federal charges on Thursday against four of the officers involved in the operation that set off racial justice protests across the country. There it is. Uh, it is. It appears to be a horrific violation. You know, if you're going after things like cocktail, cocktail napkins <laughs> and birthday party menus... And, and you are breaching the home of a former president of the United States. Uh, we are in a very, very bad place as a country. And there is way too much power concentrated in the hands of the FBI and the DOJ. Mm. And it, it, guess what? You have activated bo voters. You, you have not necessarily done the work of... Americans be like, oh, we're better than fucking, you know, we're, we're a real democracy. We're better than like the UK. They have a monarchy. And then they turn around and treat previous presidents like they're fucking royalty. Why should a previous president be above the law? They say it's a banana republic when talking about holding fucking prior presidents accountable for the first time ever. Now, is that accountability coming from mismanaged documents? I hope not. Because in that circumstance, it is a purely political move. And it's a really idiotic move on top of that. Okay? But all of the other events surrounding and other investigations surrounding this raid um, gives me at least a little bit of hope, just a semblance of hope uh, that there is more to it than just... There's more to it in this circumstance than just fucking, you know, bullshit mismanaged documents. Tarnishing a president for good who might be a future president, and uh, there, there will be hell to pay if we don't get answers very, very soon. Right, and silence isn't working. Um, mm -hmm. Biden being asked about this and not answering. They say the White House didn't know. It's hard to believe. They say the president didn't know. Ari Fleischer had an important reminder, Raymond. Um, I want to put this up. I talked about this from the podium uh, during my tenure. According to FBI notes, Biden himself in an Oval Office meeting on January 5th, 2017, so before Trump took office, he was with President Obama. Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates brought up the Logan Act in an apparent suggestion to Yates that Flynn could be prosecuted. Maybe Biden didn't know about this warrant, but Biden has a history of publicly telling DOJ what to prosecute, as he did in 2021, when he said anyone who didn't co cooperate with the January 6th committee should be prosecuted. The point is this. He's vice president. You know what's funny about that? It's like pulling up a tweet of Joe Biden saying criminals should go to jail and then being like, wow, look at Joe Biden controlling the DOJ. What the fuck do you mean? That is literally insane, dude. I mean, I can't believe I'm over here defending fucking Joe Biden of all people, but God damn, that is such a dumb way. What a dumb fucking take. Donald Trump has talked about fucking law and order. There is a level of influence that, of course, the White House has over the DOJ. But beyond that, individual investigations, like claiming that individual investigations are being conducted at the behest of Joe Biden, specifically at the, uh, specifically because no, Joe Biden actually demanded that this happen. Okay. 
by pointing to a fucking tweet about Joe Brandon saying, like, all January 6th, uh, like, people need to follow the law. And if you fail to, to, to show up to court, you should be, you know, you should be tried. That's not fucking, that's, that's less involvement in the DOJ's actions than Donald Trump personally saying, we got to do law and order, we got to kill and execute all the fucking criminals. Look at me, I used the marshals to go murder someone in fucking Washington. President then, hmm. he's in the Oval Office. Out of nowhere, he says, let's use this 1799 statute, the which Logan has never Act. been used to prosecute anyone successfully to go after an incoming Trump right. personnel. He has a history that should be looked mm. at, that should be scrutinized. And it is fair to ask him questions now. Given oh, was it Oregon? Sorry. Given that. Well, look, look, it's a very dangerous game that they're playing here. The FBI was already tarnished after the Russia collusion nightmare that they foisted on the entire country and the way that happened. So now, from the people who brought you Russia collusion, home invasion, the presidential edition. This is terrible for the republic because what you're doing is setting up a, a pattern of political recriminations. And there is no doubt when the, you hear the Republicans now saying, we're gonna investigate this one and we're gonna investigate that one and Garland, uh, maintain your records. I get why they're, they're feeling that way. But the path we're down, mm. politicizing these arms of the federal government meant to enforce the law, it's a very dangerous place. And I worry about the Republic. This is a Pandora's box. Yeah. Again, remember when Donald Trump used ICE, Vortag agents, to black bag protesters in Portland? Remember when Donald Trump used the marshals to assassinate a dude without due process? Old ass Pee Wee Herman up in here, straight up fucking talking about, straight up fucking talking about how like, oh man, oh the horror. What would happen? What would happen? Oh, oh. well, I can't believe it. Oh. To imagine federal agencies and federal authorities being used for political posturing. It's like motherfucker Donald Trump literally gassed protesters so he could go take a photo shoot with an upside down Bible outside of a church. The fuck do you mean? That they have opened. And, and God, God help us. I don't know how we're going to close it. Me neither. And President Biden, he said this two hours ago. It really stood out to me. Take a listen. Mm. We're always being told that Democrats and Republicans can't work together. When I ran, I said one of the reasons I was running, one of the three reasons was to unite the country, and I was roundly criticized for being naive. That was the old days, Joe. You used to be able to do that. Well, guess what? I don't believe it. We never have failed to. I've got to say, Cheryl, I've never felt more united than the day after a former president, political opponent, and probable future opponent to President Biden's home is raided. I've never felt more They're right. They're right. Brandon is ridiculous. Republicans have never, like, Republicans have never even tried to fucking do bipartisan compromise. Like, that's not a thing. Republicans run on their proximity to Democrats. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's out here, and it's not even naivete. I think it's fucking uh, criminal negligence. So do not mistake this and say, oh, it's just Brandon's brain is bad. He doesn't know any better. He's just a small bean. It's like, no, motherfucker. This is criminal negligence. This is deliberate. Republicans campaign on their proximity to Democrats, the Democratic platform, and Democratic attitudes. They run on how obstructionist they are. Meanwhile... Brandon, who has spent multiple lifetimes inside the Senate, still acts like that's a thing you can do. At a certain point, you got to realize, at a certain point, you have to realize, like, maybe these, you know, maybe these guys are just fucking lying to us about this whole compromise shit. 
more united yeah. President Biden. I, I'll tell you, and this is all going to backfire, but you mentioned that Wall Street Journal op-ed, the editorial board. You know what else they said? And this is what drove this home for me, and this, this characterizes how I feel. Mr. Trump is accused of violating political norms, sometimes fairly, sometimes not. The left then violates norms in response. Polarization increases public faith in institutions, and the peaceful settlement of political difference erodes further. This will backfire on them. In my opinion, what were they looking for? They weren't looking for things for a museum, for the National Archives. They're looking for something to pin him when it comes to January 6th. This is obvious. No, we have not seen the warrant, to your point. I want to see it as well, but give me a break. We know what they were looking for. And I, I mean, she's not wrong. I think so, too. But also, like, why is that bad? Like, I'm failing to comprehend why that, like, the FBI is looking for details of Trump's involvement in January 6th. Um, that's called evidence. Like, I don't understand why you would be like, I can't believe. Like, let's say you fucking rob a bank. And then the federal authorities come to your house. And they're like, hey, we suspect you robbed a bank. We have a search warrant. We're going to execute it. And then Fox News is literally like, I can't believe... They suspect this man of robbing a bank and were able to get a fucking search warrant out and, and are gathering evidence on whether or not he fucking robbed the bank. That's crazy. You can't do that. That's not allowed. Oh. I obviously would love to be in Melania's closet, too. <laughs> and, that, and that moment was probably wasted on those FBI agents. But beside that, I'm just as furious as all of you are about this. And I think that what you were going to do, look, if he didn't, if, if there was some doubt in, in Donald Trump's mind that he was going to run again, and, and I've heard that he definitely wants to run again, if there was any doubt, this galvanizes him and many, many others to go in his camp and, to, and for him to try and take mm. down Joe Biden. But... The legal side of this, and we're missing Emily today, is that if they find something, they could indeed take him out of the running in 2024. I think that that is a possible, possible motive here as well. This is yeah, I mean, she's covering her bases, you know what I mean? She's right. Yes, if they do find something that kicks him out of running in 2024, then we have a much worse problem at our hands. Ron fucking DeSantis. The base will be galvanized. And Ron Death Santis will take over. And um, there's already a lot of momentum behind him. It's just like, at that point, it's a matter of whether or not Trump's petty ass will defend Ron DeSantis and go out to bat for him or not. You know what I mean? isn't about the National Archives. This is about January 6th and stopping him from 2024. Well, Corinne Jean-Pierre was asked about that and Kat, um, the press secretary, I'm sure, eased all of our worries. Let's watch. <laughs> is this administration weaponizing the Justice Department and the FBI against political opponents? Peter, the president believes in the rule of law. The president believes in the independence of the D Department I, of I Justice. Just no, that is, house. no, it's a yes or a no for you. I'm answering the question. You may not like it, but I'm answering the question. Mm -hmm. So not a no. Mm. Yeah, and I, I can't really be surprised by that sort of answer, <laughs> right? If you don't have to answer it, you can get away with an answer like that. Why would you? But I think it's difficult the longer this goes on, knowing so little about it. As narratives start to form on both sides, people on the right get more upset that this happened. People on the left get more excited that this happened without any of us really knowing very much about it at all. Uh, and I think regardless, I think all of us should be concerned about the power that our federal law enforcement agencies have. I mean, us libertarians have been concerned about it long before this was even a dream or a whisper of something happening. So I hope that no matter what happens, that's something that everybody's continue to be concerned about and take a look at. That's such a great point. Yeah. If they can do this to a sitting president, that's never, or, sorry, a former president, if they can do this to a former president, 
What can they do to you with mm -hmm. 87,000 new IRS I have, agents? Uh, yep. I have a, just a little bit fewer resources than, than the <laughs> Trump <laughs> family. And, it, and this may have been a political play to drag Trump into the arena before the midterms. Remember, he wasn't going to announce, and he may not announce yet. But this puts him front and center and makes him an object they can run against. And perhaps that was their silly, I think, political uh, approach. And remember, they seized Republican Congressman Scott Perry's phone yesterday. Right. So they just don't give a flying flip about how politicized they look, uh, which is terrifying. Brother Bro, there's an active investigation, dog. Like, what do you mean? I'm sorry, but this is so ridiculous. Like, first and foremost, let me tell you how fucking consistent I am. I've been saying this since day one. I didn't even fucking believe that the, the federal authorities would actually, like, conduct genuine investigations into the actual politicians that may or may not have played a role in January 6th and the buildup to it. But yeah, I'm, I'm on board with what they're doing. Like, this is what they should be doing. This is what you are supposed to do. There, no one is supposed to be immune to the law. No one is supposed to be above the law. And no, I will not acknowledge that she said flying flip on the fucking murder all immigrant children uh, pod, uh, broadcast. You know what I mean? They literally, It's the same energy as Alex Jones being like, uh, these are psychic pedophile vampires that are trying to, that are, that are, you know, uh, bringing in immigrants to rape your children. I'm sorry, I said bitch. This is a family show. You know what I mean? It's like the, the same energy. They, she says flying flip while switching off from talking about how, like, immigrants are bloodthirsty murderers or some shit. The rule of law. Of the it's like government. a Gestapo. Yeah, it feels that way. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host, Harris. It's just so Here fucking funny that they're literally like, I can't believe that they went and took the phone of a sitting congressperson. This is just like the Gestapo. It's like, bro, the sitting congressperson had multiple conversations with the White House in the lead up to the fucking uh, January 6th insurrection. What the fuck do you mean? You can't simultaneously say that January 6th was a bad thing because it was led by Antifa and then also get upset when they prosecute it, right? Was January 6th good or bad? If you think it's bad, then the government should do something about it, right? The agencies and the authorities should be doing something about it. And if they're going to do something about it, you can't fucking complain that they're doing something about it that ends up you know, impacting the people that played a role in it. Me now, CNN senior uh, legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Ellie Honing. Ellie, nice to see you again. What we know and what we don't know, yeah. both very important. So let me start with the easy part of this quiz, what we do know, John. Three things that we know for sure. Prosecutors, first of all, established probable cause that a specific federal crime was committed. They established that it was likely that they would find evidence at the location at Mar-a-Lago, and we know that that was approved by a federal judge. Okay, we have that in place. The rest of this is unanswered. One of the biggest questions, what evidence did prosecutors use to establish that probable cause? Now, the way you do this as a prosecutor is you have to write out what we call an affidavit in support of a search warrant. These documents can be dozens of pages. This is actually the one from the Michael Cohen case, which was over 200 pages long. This is the Rosetta Stone. This will tell us everything we need to know. Who has it, though? Prosecutors have it. The judge has it, but it's what we call under seal, meaning not available to us in the public. Donald Trump does not have this document in his possession. He won't get it unless there ever comes a day when he is charged. So, but he does yes. have something. Exactly. He does have what we call a search warrant. Does he have a copy? Yes. Can he release it? Yes. However, there's fairly limited information in this document. It's one page. This is it. This is a sample of it. It tells you where is to be searched, Mar-a-Lago, what are they looking for? It'll say things like documents, papers, computers. It won't get into specificity usually. Who's the judge and when does the FBI have to conduct the search warrant by? However, sometimes there is an attachment to this and that can tell you 
here are the crimes that prosecutors allege may have been committed. So Donald Trump does have that document, but it will not give chapter and verse. Another important document that Donald Trump has will answer the question of what did the FBI take from Mar-a-Lago? Now, this is called a return. It's basically an invoice. It's a receipt. The FBI will say, here's what we took out of your property. But again, there is a level of generality to that. They're not going to detail every piece of paper. It will more likely say something like 12 boxes, X number of laptops, that kind of thing. But Donald Trump has that. He can release that too. Again, if it's innocuous though, the warrant itself, why wouldn't he release it? Is it a possibility of an attachment that outlines the crimes? That could well be. I think that would be the most important thing if there is that attachment. And it fairly frequently does have an attachment to it. It would say, typically, we believe that here's the crimes we established probable cause. Trump may not want that out there. And again, he could release that if he wanted to. Absolutely. So for all the calls from Eric Garland to come out and say something right now, Trump could do that. They both have information, but yes, Trump could release that. All right, what other questions do you have out there? You're not seeing the big picture here, the man Trump appointed? Dude, I think it's not that fucking five, uh, five head. I don't think it's that five head, dude. You're saying that uh, Trump appointed judge approved the Trump appointed FBI's warrant in order to boost his election uh, polling via a sham raid. Like, no, like that's stop is stop thinking that Donald Trump has like a uh, five D uh, uh, chess moves. Trump did change who can deal with records last minute. I used both consent and search warrants dozens of times over the course of my career to recover classified government info, but never a subpoena. Let's talk subpoenas and why they are not used to recover classified material from those not authorized to have it. I'm talking here about information produced by the USG containing national defense information appropriately classified in accordance with the EO 13526. Someone not authorized to possess it in this thread refers to the former President Trump. Presidents to not get security. Presidents do not get security clearances. They gain access to classified info by virtue of their election and are the USG's ultimate classification and declassification authority. Look, here's the reality, okay? Here's, here's the big whammy. The only way that this, like, uh, mishandled information, mishandling of classified information is actually a big fucking deal, Okay? You clicked the wrong link. I just clicked the link link, man. I can't. Oh, it's. Oh, that person has blocked me. That's why I can't see it. Is it customary for a president to name seven new custodians of records on his last day of office? Dumbass, like. Fucking Hillary Clinton fans. Look, listen, the main problem here is that Donald Trump has had on multiple occasions throughout his presidency uh, allowed access to Mar-a-Lago as he was conducting presidential business, and that is, uh, in the way things go, uh, a, a major security concern. When you're the president, you're not allowed, you're not supposed to have like random foreign nationals that may or may not be, uh, uh, you know, spies or may or may not have an interest in like learning about details ahead of time for their own countries. Like, that's just how fucking, you know, that's how the White House works. You're not supposed to just be around random people. Donald Trump did that. Time and time again, inside of Mar-a-Lago. So the idea that, like, uh, this is just evidence mishandling, well, it goes a little bit further than that. Okay? 
classified information being inside of Mar-a-Lago, a, an area that is easy to penetrate because of so much fucking foot traffic uh, and, and a lack of control over like who goes in and who goes out overall because of a country club. Having classified information there is a, is, a, is a national security concern, especially if you don't know what the fucking classified information is. It could be some serious uh, classified information because the president has access to all of it that he just took and put in a fucking safe there to, I don't know, show random fucking foreign nationals if he wants to, buys if he wants to, sell if he wants to. Not saying that he did this, not trying to get in, get all Jason Bourne with it, right? But that is the main concern as far as like from an archival perspective. It's not just a bunch of fucking librarian nerds who are going, oh my God, I can't believe this information is out there. Like, no, there's a, there's a reason as to why this is uh, not allowed. Now, it can be something as fucking uh, innocuous as menus or notes written on a cocktail napkin because technically a lot of that stuff is already uh, classified as well. Or it can be some serious uh, classified information that is a matter of uh, national security. Okay. The FBI also got a copy of Mar-a-Lago surveillance tapes. So with the knowledge that Trump had this classified info, they might've seen something in those tapes that spur the warrant. Like national archives isn't a random librarian. I know, but I'm exaggerating it because like, even because a lot of the Republicans are saying that like the national archives are, or like a like a librarian on steroids to belittle the the uh, most damaging aspects of this investigation. And yes, you are right, Petronats. Certain classified materials designated to re for review only in a skiff, a secured facility. Now, the other side of it is that Mar-a-Lago, at least while Trump was president, could have had that. Except once he was no longer president, that government property, because the secured facilities like that would be technically government property, that would no longer be government property. So therefore, storing classified information in a room like that, even while you're president, might be legal, but would be totally illegal when you're no longer president because you're a private citizen doesn't matter if you're interested in running for president again. doesn't matter what you fucking do. He's losing what called, yeah, what is called need to know. Okay. That goes away the moment his successor is sworn in. By tradition, incumbent presidents extend access to classified info as needed to their successors. Notably, Biden did not, citing Trump's erratic behavior. At least three reasons make a subpoena inappropriate to recover classified docs. First, classified docs are the property of the USG. In the hands of an unauthorized person, they are contraband. Imagine using a subpoena to demand the return of $10,000 stolen by a bank robber. In the words of Asharangapa, a subpoena implies the recipient is the lawful custodian or bailer of the property. Yeah, you ask, you, you subpoena someone or something when you know they're going to, or they're technically supposed to collaborate. There's a likelihood that they're going to collaborate. If the law has already been broken and the investigation itself revolves around the law being broken uh, in violation of the law, then they're not going to fucking subpoena that. They're going to go out and get it because why the fuck would you give them that? That's why the government has a clear hurdle and provide a reason to get it. If you're an unauthorized possessor, you are simply a thief of a holding stolen property. So all of this hinges on what the classified documents detail and how that plays into uh, a potential subsequent investigation into Donald Trump's involvement in January 6. Because if the information that they have recovered is nothing, okay, and it's just like napkins and shit, then the FBI grossly overstepped um, and and uh, did something that is unprecedented. Raid the home of a of a former president. 
at first you were saying there was more than our, just archival documents, but now you're trying to defend that it might just be documents. No, I said from the jump that this would be a gigantic fucking misstep. What I'm just saying right now, what you're hearing from me, the words that are coming out of my mouth, as much as I celebrate uh, you know, Donald Trump being fucking upset and conservatives losing their minds, I said on day one that if this is a nothing burger, which it can be, this would be a gross misstep for the FBI. Okay? That's part of the reason why I believe that there is more to it than just, uh, you know, bullshit uh, archives. That the classified information that is being retrieved is important. You get it? He's being prosecuted today for something they could legally do yesterday. Big deal. I don't know why you're getting all excited about the security state's property all of a sudden. Wait, what? No, I don't give a fuck. I just, I'm excited at the prospect of Donald Trump getting annoyed. I'm excited at the prospect of conservatives losing their fucking uh, minds over it. That they're f foaming out of their mouths. Also, shut the fuck up being like, this is security state apparatus uh, bullshit. Like, what do you mean, dog? What the fuck? How many times have I talked about the security state overreaching? How we live in a fucking surveillance state. How the FBI and, and the CIA have historically done whatever the fuck they want to marginalize people. The moment that that turns on a fucking person with power, a person with privilege. What you said at first was you hoped, as we all did, that it was more than archives. Yeah. That is what I said. Anyway, security state all of a sudden because Daddy Trump got arrested. Yeah, if you're like a fucking anarchist in this community that has been around for like five to six months, then shut the fuck up. Shut up. Like, oh man, I'm morally consistent. I'm so morally consistent, I'm not going to fucking sit here and act like it's a good thing that Donald Trump's getting uh, his wee-wee's hurt, his fifi's hurt. Don't worry, they didn't murder him, unfortunately. Why are people getting so worked up about the tone of what you said? Like, it's not that deep? Um, because, as we have talked about time and time again, people are not really interested in analysis or news or commentary. They're more interested in... They're more interested in uh, Streamer Man. What he said, what I misunderstood about what he said, and whether or not what he said came to be real or not. Okay. It's it's more so about like uh streamer man and and maybe like uh what other streamer man that I like more uh feels about streamer man. It's always just like more gotcha, which is ironic because I I uh account for that in my commentary. So it's probably your personal misunderstanding. Anyway, <laughs> Hassan personally caused the Ukraine war, so of course people take a good look at every sentence of his. Yeah, exactly. It's because I caused the Ukrainian war to happen. Anyway. After calling for Hillary Clinton to be jailed in 2018, Trump signed a law that stiffened the penalty for unauthorized removal and retention of classified documents from one year to five years, turning it into a felony offense. That's so funny. So even if it's a fucking nothing burger, it's Trump's very own FBI director and Trump's very own actions. This is like that Oklahoma guy who got caught uh, uh, trying to do sex, like, who got caught trying to fuck, like, a 17-year-old male prostitute, but he was 500 miles within a church, or no, what is it, 500, uh, uh, was it 500 feet around a church or a school, which was his own fucking, which was, like, his own law that he had signed that, that, uh, added additional punitive damages. It was a school, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, with crack as well, of course, always. Huh. Your take on the outrage Steven Crowder was spewing yesterday was on point. Loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. And it still is awesome. And I want to see more of it, to be honest. Yeah, or Eric Greitens with revenge porn. That was fun, too. Yeah, the guy I'm talking about is Ralph Shorty. The Oklahoma State legislator uh, that got arrested for uh, sex trafficking a minor. Was That was... Uh, Ralph Shorty. Yeah, his last name is Shorty. Uh, anyway, let's continue. Outstanding. So what documents exactly were still at Mar-a-Lago at the moment the search warrant was executed? Now, we know that yeah. earlier this year, there were 15 boxes of, of documents delivered from Mar-a-Lago to the National Archives. DOJ then obtained those same 15 boxes from the National Archives. Now, DOJ, as our new reporting has shown, started to grow suspicious and learned there were other documents there and started to grow distrustful of the way they were being handled. They went in, did the search warrant, and our reporting now is that DOJ has grabbed about 12 more boxes from Mar-a-Lago. What's in there, we will find out. And then there's a the question of, why did DOJ exactly use a search warrant instead of less intrusive means. And there's a really interesting history here. Back in June, there was this, these meetings that Caitlin Collins and others have reported for us where investigators went and met with Trump's team at Mar-a-Lago, saw that there were shown that there were other boxes of documents in the basement. Then the investigators came back and said, hey, throw a padlock on that, save mm -hmm. them for us. So why were investigators okay with that? Why were they okay with those documents staying at Mar-a-Lago for months and months until August 8th, until two days ago, when they executed the search warrant, that's an intrusive mean. Bro, when they bust out the fucking smart board with the touchpad, you know shit's popping, okay? This is like Super Bowl coverage. They only bring this out during election season. You know these motherfuckers are horned up. Which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with. I'm horned up too, okay? I'm so fucking horned up, I almost forgot the top of the hour ad break. Which, of course, I did not forget. That was a debate. Here it is. The top of the hour. The top of the hour ad break is upon us. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars, or you can do for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, your favorite broadcaster is me. Okay, or you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the one minute ad break now. Where's the guy with the khaki? Steve Kornacki? The khaki? Steve Korn khaki? And I think ultimately DOJ is going to have to justify it. Again, and that's one of the unanswered questions here. The answer to that, if it exists, might explain something. Yeah. One of the things being thrown out there by Trump allies is, oh, well, this information was all declassified anyway. Yeah, so Pam Brown has new reporting that that may well be one of the defenses. One of the potential crimes here is mishandling of classified documents that we may see. He does have very tiny hands. I did notice that. You are correct about that. A defense that, well, Trump actually did declassify him. Now, look, you have to do it while you're president. You can't do it now, many months later. The question is, did he actually declassify? There's no specific form you have to fill out to declassify. The president has broad authority over that. The question is, what does the evidence show? Is there actually proof that he declassified? But watch for that. That could be a battle coming up. You know, everyone calling for Merrick Garland to come forward with information. Yeah. Will DOJ do so? So he can. He's allowed to. I would love to hear him call a press conference for today and tell us what's going on. But I do not believe he will, given his history and given a really important prosecutorial principle. You do not talk about pending investigations. Part of that is strategic. Bill Belichick doesn't walk his playbook across to the other sideline and say, here's what we're doing. No, right? he, he takes practices. <laughs> well, that's true. Actually, not, Allegedly. not the best example. Yeah. Right. But uh, you want to maintain the secrecy of your investigation. You don't want to tell the other team what you're doing. But part of that is also an important principle to protect the rights, the reputation of whoever may be under investigation. Generally speaking, a person who's being investigated doesn't want the attorney general coming out and saying, hey, we believe this person may have committed a crime. Just last thing, yeah. the proximity of the midterms here. Are they playing into this? Yeah, so midterms are now exactly 90 days away, and that matters because there's a longstanding DOJ policy. You don't take an over-investigative step like a search warrant that may be politically sensitive within 90 days of the midterm. So they Dog, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, 
it, it is first of all the fbi is famous for doing this shit remember jim comey the second investigation into hillary clinton that was unironically a bigger reason a bigger reason why hillary clinton lost than like russia was okay so no the idea that fucking uh you know the fbi doesn't do this shit is completely false they certainly do that and they certainly have done it and they certainly will probably continue to do it are you fucking kidding me that was like a day before the election jim Comey was like actually crooked hillary might be crooked here it is like that's wild secondly secondly 90 days out of an election bitch there's elections every fucking two years what do you mean it's like saying, oh, the, it's kind of like, oh, dude, how dare you post something funny uh, this close to a mass shooting? Well, I'm sorry. I live in America. There's a mass shooting every fucking day. I didn't realize there were rules like this. Oh, well, 90 days outside of an election. It's like, okay, well, that's like all the time. There's elections all the fucking time. But acid washing emails is different, bro. Also, I don't care. Throw Hillary Clinton under the jail, you dumb bitch. I'm mad at Donald Trump because he didn't do it. Suck my dick. Shut the fuck up. Do something about it. I hate that. I hate that people are like, oh, well, Hillary Clinton. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. Lock her up. Lock her up. Except, you know, Trump fucking failed to do that. So maybe... You should be, you should stop being such a fucking cuck about your big, gigantic, sweaty fucking baby and all of his goddamn failures. Why are you coming in here repeating the L's of Donald Trump's presidency? He ran on locking her up and he fucking did not. Huh. <sighs> did that search 92 days before maybe coincidence maybe because they were trying to stay out of that night does it matter window. that donald trump's not running in the midterms no it doesn't i mean there's a way to technically construe that memo <clears throat> oh who cares but who looms larger over these midterms than donald trump you have to be realistic if you're doj and construing it ellie honing very helpful as always Thanks, thank Sean. you one senator who is speaking out yeah here it is more l's from fucking conservatives by the way Against all of this, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, you actually said about this, I found it interesting that Joe Biden, the administration, the DOJ, the FBI are playing with fire. Look, I'm, I'm here in a very unique position in South Florida, surrounded by people that come from countries where this is familiar to them. This is shocking to Americans, but in Latin America and many of these you know, countries around the world, here's what happens. A group takes power. One of the first things that group does is they begin to persecute and go after their political opponents. And then when the supporters of their political opponents begin to complain about it, they begin to target them and they criminalize opposition. And that's what's happening here now. They took power. They are demanding. And you see it on Twitter. You see their public statements. They are demanding. They want Donald Trump arrested. They want him charged right now. They wanted him charged months ago, years ago. They wanted him charged. And I'm telling you the next thing you're going to see here, Sean, because it's the playbook. And that is... They are now going to begin to say, oh, these Trump supporters, these Republicans, they're very upset. They're saying very angry things. We think they might be a threat. We think they're radical extremists. Let's start arresting them. You're going, the next step in this process is going to be that people who- Wait, I thought they did that already. I don't understand why they're not, why they're saying like, oh, they might do that. I thought the government did that already by uh, overreaching and arresting January 6th patriots. Once again, I am begging. For all levels of government to behave the way that Republicans claim they behave. I'm begging. I'm not asking. I'm begging. Can you imagine a world in which, like, the Democratic Party is as vicious and as militant and as pro-fucking labor as the Republican Party claims the Democrats are? Can you fucking imagine? A Democratic Party with teeth. A Democratic Party that weaponizes the IRS against, like, Republican small business owners. A Democratic Party that weaponizes the FBI against reactionary prior leaders. Oh, yeah, this was an IRS job posting. Oh, my God, it got me horned up. Um, 
carry a firearm and be willing to use deadly force if necessary. Be willing and able to participate in arrest, execution of search warrants, and other dangerous assignments. I want. I am buying for a Democratic Party that fucking arms the IRS and steals the money of conservative business owners at gunpoint. I am vying for a, I, I want a Democratic Party to like actually fucking steal elections and not so that they're like doing, you know, marginal change by offering the oil and gas industry uh, acres of land at the cost of like uh, a couple uh, million or billion dollars in fucking subsidies and credits to the renewable energy industry. I'm talking like they fucking steal elections. It's basically like a one party government and they're just instituting communism. That's what I want. Okay? But we can't have that. Because that's not real. Who are supporters of Donald Trump or just conservatives complaining about this are going to begin to get harassed by, are going to begin to get labeled as potential insurrectionists and are going to begin to get harassed uh, by law enforcement. That's the next step in this playbook, sadly. So, you know, we went through three years, Senator, three long years where we now know that FISA warrants were obtained using an unverifiable, dirty Russian dossier that was bought and paid for by Donald Trump's opponent in 2016, Hillary Clinton. And all of that information was false. And even Andrew McCabe, the deputy director of the FBI, said without that dirty dossier, there wouldn't be any FISA warrants. But yet they used it four times. Even when the subsource for Christopher Steele acknowledged none of it was true, there were no hookers in the Ritz-Carlton in Moscow urinating on... IRS job listings aren't loading right now? What are we, fucking DDoS the IRS job listing site? What the fuck? Porsche beats Tesla's Nürburgring EV record with Taycan Turbo S. I don't have a Taycan Turbo S, but let's fucking go. Someone send this to fucking Austin, dude. Donald Trump's bed, which was part of this crap. This went on for three long years. I believe the FBI and I believe the Department of Justice. I have the one model below that. I have the Taycan 4S. This have squandered any goodwill or any any deserved trust of the american people especially when it comes to donald trump what could they possibly be looking for here well i actually don't think they went in looking for documents i think that was probably their their excuse that they found some obama donor judge to, to write him a, 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 um, a ruse yeah they, they found some obama donor judge to write, not even a judge, a magistrate, to, to write uh, and give them the search warrant. I think they went in there looking to see whatever they could find. Their argument is, all right, we were here looking for documents. We didn't. The Obama donor judge. It's like, bro, half the time these guys are still Federalist Society guys, right? I don't even know about this particular judge, but it's so funny that they're like, oh, he's an Obama donor. Like the one fucking judge that that isn't like a, like a vulturous parasite who probably is still a fucking vulture's parasite, by the way. But, like, they found the one guy who wasn't directly, like, uh, in the let's murder brown people society, okay? And now they're just like, wow, look at that. This guy donated to Obama, clearly an activist judge. It's like, bro, the entire, you will never stop until the entire judicial system is exclusively uh, filled. Exclusively filled with Federalist Society freaks. Meanwhile, I didn't even know that, but wait, 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 wait. This judge was also appointed by fucking Trump? Stop. Yo, you know who else donated to the Democrats, by the way? Donald Trump! Remember that tweet from like two days ago? Epstein associate, FBI targeted raid on Epstein associate uh, uh, Clinton donor? That's Donald Trump! Didn't find those, but look what we did find. Or who knows what happened while they were in there because the lawyers weren't allowed to see.
Also, another incredible fucking moment here is that they constantly talk about, like, speaking of Epstein, the judge used to be Epstein's lawyer. Hey, you know who, what else? You know who else was Epstein's lawyer? Fox News' number one commentator, Alan fucking Dershowitz. And by the way, they went fucking balls to the wall. They doxed him. <laughs> The far right extremists are violently threatening the Trump search warrant judge. They're also, uh, I think, they, bro, they literally, they have doxxed and are threatening Christopher Ray. I was reading earlier today that they are like far right extremists are. They're going after anyone that has wronged Donald Trump, which is so unhinged. And so funny, please go to jail. Please send them to fucking jail, dude. Can you imagine? It's the funniest thing you can do. You're like so mad about an FBI investigation that you try to like fucking threaten the life of the director of the FBI. Obama took millions of pages of documents with him. Well, guess what, dude? Donald Trump allowed that confidential information to transfer over to Obama. Whereas apparently Joe Brandon didn't. That's right. Dark Brandon rises. I said it. Dark Brandon, rise up. Who the fuck would want to text Jesse? Is he trying to... I was going to say, is he trying to get underage girls to text them, but also at the same time... You know, the, the youngest person, the youngest Fox News watcher is like 78 years old. So that joke doesn't really land when you think about all the circumstances. It's for boomers without Twitter. Is Jesse Waters not gay? I always thought he was. I for a little bit thought Jesse Waters was gay too, but no, nah, he's too fucking bro -y. I don't think he's gay. Jesse Waters is a bit queer coded though. For sure. See it. These people are obsessed. The far left, they will stop at nothing. People don't understand this is the playbook from all over the world. The far left believes that their cause is so worthy that anyone who is against it must be evil, must be a criminal, and must be punished and put away. Look, this is one of the reasons. I know people hear this all the time. This is why elections really matter. We've got to take back the majority in the House and Senate so we can subpoena the records behind this and these other efforts so we could bring in the director of the FBI, the attorney general, and force people to testify under oath about who told you what, who told you to do this, what was the justification behind this, this stuff needs to happen. And, and, and I hope we have to have the guts to do that. Okay? But they're doing but, but here, this under a pretext. Senator, I have in front of me the National no Archives doubt. Record Administration note that, in fact, Donald Trump and, and the, the people in Mar-a-Lago were cooperating with them. This is from February. So I don't know what... It is a pretext. It, it, it was a pretext They for can't what? say they're doing it because of January 6th. Yeah, no doubt. Look, they can't say, oh, this is because of January 6th. They can't. So they thought this was a cute way to get around it. And they could say, oh, no, this is nothing to do with the Capitol stuff and the January 6th committee. This is because of the documents that he retained that he still has. And that's why we went in there. But we didn't find that. But we found all these other things uh, that we think is, are incriminating. They, they don't know what they were going to find. That's the point. But I don't, I mean, look, you know. I don't understand why Marco Rubio is over here talking shit like, if he wanted more detail, he could have just fucking put his ear to the ground and he would have fucking heard everything that was going on. He's in Florida. He could probably hear them directly from Vermont. Okay, he could hear them from Connecticut if he wanted to. But, you know, all he had to do was just, just do this and then boom. He can hear everything happening inside of Mar-a-Lago all the way up to fucking New York City. When Marco Rubio gets into a convertible vehicle, the vehicle cannot go above 35 miles an hour. I'm, his ears are like parachutes. You can fucking crank it. You can literally try to, you can try to rip it all the way down, okay? Uh, meanwhile, you know, the car is just not going. It's like having uh, two sets of parachutes stuck behind it.
know this, and I think a lot of people that watch this program know this, but a lot of Americans are busy with their everyday lives and don't miss it. Every single day. Prom That's fucked up, Hasanabi. He can hear you talking shit right now. Yeah, nobody ever fucking says, oh, Marco Rubio won't hear your fucking uh, words, but someone with Dumbo ass ears will. No, motherfucker, Marco Rubio does hear my words. He can hear me from all around the country, dog. Trust me. Prominent members of the left, prominent Democrats in Congress are demanding that Merrick Garland, that he indict Donald Trump right now. Forget about the evidence. They want him indicted. They want him put away in jail. They've been demanding that for months and months and months, as have, you know, many of these idiots uh, who are commentators and these other networks that are giddy about it. Yeah. Some of these people are supposedly legal experts, and they say... Marco Rubio, has, Marco Rubio literally has 300 channels plus HBO Max directly beaming into him through a satellite, okay? Marco Rubio is responsible for internet access in third world countries. And you're out here making fun of them. That's fucked up. Stupid and ridiculous things about how the law applies and how it doesn't apply. Marco it's Rubio is a test case for, uh, for, for Elon Musk's uh, satellite internet service. But, but I'll tell you where the danger is and the fire is here. Okay, what comes around goes around. And here's what's going to happen now. Now, one day they won't be in power. And whoever is in power, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to do it back to the other side. And now we do become a banana republic. Now we become like those countries that people come to America to get away from, where there is no rule of law and where everything is politicized and where opposition wow. to those in power is criminalized. That's a frightening thing to say, and it's sad to say that we don't have equal justice or application of our laws. Senator Rubio, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Republic hey, click again, here. Dude. Banana republic. Banana republic, dude. Trump back candidates, of course, are dominating across primaries across the United States. This will, of course, only strengthen him. Um, you know what I mean? Only strengthen his support now. The president's influence on Republican voters was underscored once again last night as several Trump back candidates won their primaries in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Connecticut. And Vermont, Ed O'Keefe is watching all these results for us, and he joins us now. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Tony. It was another good night for candidates backed by the former president. In Battleground, Wisconsin, Trump's choice for governor, Tim Michaels, who falsely claimed the 2020 election was rigged, won the primary over former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Cleefish, who'd been... At a certain point, you're going re to realize that it's a redundancy to say Trump backed candidate, which also claims the election was stolen. I don't know when we arrive at that point, but I think we're at that point now. Okay. Been backed. It's just like half the reason why he, he backs candidates is because they say the election was stolen. By former vice president, Mike Pence, Michaels will face incumbent Tony Evers in a battle that could forever reshape elections in the Badger state. In Wisconsin's U.S. Senate race, Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes won the Democratic primary. He calls himself the other Mandela and would become the first black senator in Wisconsin if he wins. He'll face off against Senator Ron Johnson, considered the most vulnerable Senate Republican on the ballot this year and one of Trump's biggest supporters. In Washington state, another sign of the former president's strength, Jamie Herrera Butler conceded and will not be on the ballot in November. She was one of 10 House Republicans who voted to impeach the former president after the January 6th riots. Now seven of them have either retired or lost their race, with Liz Cheney likely next on that list when she faces Wyoming primary voters next week. Meanwhile, in Vermont, Becca Ballant won the Democratic primary and could make history on two fronts. If she wins her House race in November, she will become the first woman and the first openly gay person to ever represent the Green Mountain State in Congress. Nate? Ed, thank you. You want to see President Biden, the senator, run for a second term? Well, what I want to see right now is that the Congress of the United States, working with President Biden next year, develop an agenda that says to working families and the elderly and the kids, we understand your pain and that we have the guts to take on the big money and trust at a time when we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth. You know, Wolf, you've heard me say this again, and I think recent events point this out. This country is moving toward an oligarchic form of society, where you got three people on top who own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. You got three Wall Street firms 
that have asked control assets of over $20 trillion. That's the GDP of the United States. Unbelievable wealth and power at the top, while the middle class is in decline and lower income people are really suffering. We need to work right now, next year, with President Biden on an address, on an issue, on an agenda that addresses those issues. Well, let me rephrase the question. Do you want to see him run for re-election? Look, right now, my concern is electing more Democrats in this midterm election so we can finally address the needs of working families. That's where my mind is right now. Police in New Mexico have made an arrest after the recent murders of four Muslim men in Albuquerque. 51-year-old... Oh, this is... Uh... I was going to cover this a couple days ago. There was a sequence of murders that happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, that happened in the Muslim community. And now uh, it is believed... Originally, they were like, maybe it's a hate crime. Uh, but now it is believed to... And there's not enough details out yet. But from what I understand, it is believed to be sectarian in fighting. Muhammad Saeed has been charged with two of those murders. CBS News obtained the surveillance or video. A showing killer. a person that Muslim leaders say appears to be the suspect prior to the shootings. Omar Villafranca is in Albuquerque. Omar, good morning. Did police say anything about a possible motive? Good morning. Police haven't been specific on a motive, and they're still trying to figure out if the murders are hate crimes. Detectives did search the suspect's home, and they say they found evidence that basically says, in their words, he knew the victims to some extent. For months, the unsolved murders of four Muslim men had this community in Albuquerque on edge. But in the end, police say a tip from someone here led them to a suspect, Muhammad Syed. You put faith in us? You trusted us, you passed information on to us that was crucial, and that led for us to being able to make uh, an arrest in this case. Police say Syed, who is 51 and also Muslim, has now been charged with the recent murders. Of <laughs> My man's a religion of peace, everybody. Yeah, dude, famously, Christians never kill other Christians. You know what I'm saying? Like, if there's one thing, if there's one thing, it's just like, <laughs> bro, that's so awesome. That is so fucking funny, dude. You're just, you're, you're literally out of your fucking mind. Like, the overwhelming majority of American murders are conducted by Christians in the hands of other Christians, okay? Like, Christians killing Christians. Like, that's so fucking stupid to be like, oh, I can't believe it, dude. Muslim on Muslim violence. Chubby and sweats. I'm not banning him because I think he's got some brilliant takes. I want to keep him in here. Of Aftab Hussein and Muhammad Afzal Hussein. Syed is also the primary suspect in the killings of two other men, Muhammad Zahir Ahmadi and Naeem Hussein. Syed has been taken into custody after a traffic stop, and police say a search of his home yielded evidence connecting him to the murders. Multiple firearms were recovered from that home. Right now, we believe that at least one of them inside the home and one of them inside the car that was pulled over are matching to our two crime scenes. Investigators say they found evidence that suggests the suspect may have known the victims and the attacks might have been motivated by an interpersonal conflict. CBS News has also obtained this video showing who Muslim leaders say appears to be Syed, slashing tires in the parking lot of a mosque after a dispute. Police have not yet corroborated these images. This crime made our community feel like he was under attack. We spoke with the brother of one of the victims about the murder suspect. This is an act which is not done by people who represent this state and this city. So this is an outlier. So I got relief that once an individual is caught, so we are in peace. Even with the suspect in custody, police will keep up their patrols around mosques and Islamic centers here. Uh, it's also worth noting that investigators are still working on potential charges involving the two other homicides. Nancy? A relief for the Muslim community. Why do they label them as Muslim men? Because it was, dude, a string of crimes in an otherwise like insular community uh, of an ethnic or religious minority is... An indication, like, is oftentimes used as an indication that, like, there might be a hate crime motivation. That's the reason why they're mentioning that it's, like, Muslim. Uh, it, it's uh, that they're all, they're all living in the same neighborhood or they're all living in the same region. They're all Muslim. Um, there's also uh, 
There's also uh, a reason to believe that it's happening around, uh, you know, mosques and shit. That's why. Community that someone is now behind bars. Omar, thank you. Monkeypox? I mean, here, we'll watch this. Here we are. Our main story tonight concerns something that's been getting more and more urgent over the past two months. Leah Michelle's comeback. It's an unpleasant surprise, and the longer we let it continue, the harder it'll be to stop. Sorry, did I say Leah Michelle's comeback? I meant... Wait, before we do that, here's the man on the verge of tears after Trump's Florida home was raided, chat. I gotta show you. Our, day, our top story of tonight, okay? Or our daily shot in Freuda. Let's, uh, let's have a brief moment of, of celebration here. I love this guy. He's done so much for this country, more than any president in the United, in the United States. This gets you emotional. Yeah, absolutely it is. You know, look what they're putting his family through. Look what they're putting him through. <laughs> That's awesome. I love this guy. He's done so much. gets you emotional. Yeah, absolutely it is. You know, look. Bro, that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Please give me more of that. Please. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like, I... When you have nothing, okay? When you have nothing, this gives me so much fucking joy. You don't understand. It's so much joy. Look what that put is. Dude is suffering from heavy lead poisoning. Oh. 